Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you're watching My Books Me and today I'm bringing you my spring book haul. It feels like super long time since I've done a book haul. I mean I know I'm doing them every season but it still feels like such a long time ago. I've got quite a few books that I've picked up over the last three months. Honestly not as many as I thought I would but I've kind of been invested more in ebooks recently than I have physical books because a lot of the books I had been reading are only available on ebooks or are super difficult to get here in Australia physically. Um, so let's just dive right in. So first up we have The Upside of Being Single by Emma Hart. You guys know I love Emma's books and I have been wanting to collect her books physically but they're only available on Amazon and they're quite expensive to get here in Australia between just the general cost of the book and then postage so I've kind of avoided it. However I found this on eBay, it was located in Sydney and it was like on par with like regular pricing of like our paperbacks which I was so excited about. And um what makes this even more awesome is the fact that the upside to the upside of being single was actually the first new release of Emma's that I read. Like prior to this, I had obviously read some of her other stuff, but this was like the first new release that I read and loved. Did I get this one for review? I don't even think I don't know if I got this one for review, but the point is I'm just so glad I have an Emma Hart book in my physical collection. This is an awesome book. Um it takes place during Mardi Gras in New Orleans and it's super fun and I just freaking love it. I'll link below to my review for it. The next book was kindly sent to me from Harlequin Australia and that is Heart of the Cross by Emily Madden. Um, I haven't even properly looked into what this book was about but you guys will have seen my previous book haul. I mentioned a couple of books that are similar to this. These are from the imprint um, Mirror where they are um, Australian authors with, Australi with predominantly Australian settings and they seem to all be books that have like a historical multiple generational kind of element to them um this one one i'm surprised i haven't given this to my mum to read yet and two i'm surprised i haven't looked at it properly so um ireland 1959 rosie hart is content leaving her home behind to follow her new husband to australia but she soon discovers uh there is no room for her and the young son in the life he has built in the vibrant King's Cross. As their marriage crumbles, Rosie will need to fight for the golden future her son deserves. Rose Bay, 1984. Haunted by her past, Rosie is determined her daughter Maggie will follow the path she has set for her, but Maggie has plans of her own, and Rosie uh, can only pray the grief that plagues the heart name won't follow her. Sydney, 2017. When her grandmother dies and leaves Brianna Hart a secret apartment in King's Cross, Brie wonders what else Rosie was keeping from her. As Brie chases the truth of Rosie's past, she uncovers a, an incredible story of passion, violence, love, and tragedy. Is a Hart's family legacy of loss inescapable, or has Rosie gifted her granddaughter with a future of hope? It sounds really, really cool. I haven't really heard too much else about this, but this imprint seems to have really, really great books. So if you are into Australian novels and a bit of historical um, setting and drama and romance, then I think this is an imprint you really need to check out. But also this cover just looks really beautiful. Next up, I got some books for my birthday. If you guys follow my other channel, Just Me Victoria, you would have seen me talk about these. Firstly, I got the paperback edition of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, mainly because I am going to see Cursed Child again in April next year and I want to take this book for like photo ops. I don't know. I just wanted the physical copy. Plus, I actually bought Cursed Child back when it first came out. It was the original like script rehearsal edition of the book and I'm really interested to see how the rehearsal edition compares to like the finalized edition that we get to buy and see if it's any different. I don't know. I just kind of wanted like a small paperback that fit with the rest of the collection. Who's sue me? Next up is While You Were Reading by Ali Berg and Michelle Coles. Um, I don't really know anything about this book, but it looks really good and I think it's like right up my alley because from what I've heard it's kind of it's a love story for book lovers that celebrates much more than romance. So it's kind of like a really meta thing I think where it's a romance novel about romance. It's a romance novel about romance novels. I, I think that's how it's meant to go. I don't know. Meet Beatrix, Babbage, 29 year old, dog era of books and accidental destroyer of weddings. After ruining her best friend's nuptials, B relocates to the other side of the country in search of a fresh start, including meeting new people, living life to the fullest and finally pulling off balayage. That's that how you say it? I think that's how you say it. But after a few months, life is more stagnant than ever. Bee's job is dead end, her romantic life non-existent, and her only friends are her books, her barista, and her cleaning lady. Then Bee stumbles across a second-hand novel inscribed with notes, besotted with the poetic inscriptions, Bee's determined to find the author, and along the way she finds herself entangled in one hell of a love quandary. 
quadrangle. Funny, poignant and insightful while you were reading reveals that there's no such thing as perfection, the value of true friendship and most importantly the power of not living in fiction but still reading it often. It sounds good. Next up is Riverdale, uh, The Day Before, a prequel novel by Nicole uh, Osto. There is a trilogy of these books that is meant to be prequels to the show. This takes place um, in the early hours of the morning of the 4th of July, so when Jason Blossom was shot and like the entire story of Riverdale started back in the simple days when all we were wondering was what happened to Jason. Um, I will admit, I got halfway through season two and I stopped watching. Not because I wasn't enjoying the show, but just because I got sidetracked. I just haven't got back to it. Um, but yeah, this has me really wanting to read these novels and then rewatch the show. Um, from what I can gather in here, this has like alternating like perspectives. There's like some um, text moments and some documents in here. Um, and stuff like that uh, but yeah I'm excited I'm excited to like yeah get back into Riverdale through this book I haven't really heard much about these books and if they're any good or not but I'm gonna give it a go and speaking of using books to get back into shows we also have Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Season of the Witch a prequel novel by Sarah Reese Brennan um, so this takes place over the summer before Sabrina's 16th birthday um, this book only came out this year I don't know if there's plans for any more um, in this series, but I'm excited to give this a go. I loved Sabrina, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I have two episodes, well, I got to episode eight and got sidetracked and stopped watching. Story of my life. Um, and I haven't seen the, were the midwinter prequel and has the next season come out? Has the next part of season one come out? I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> So I want to read this and then re-watch the show and yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading and watching. Next up I got a beautiful book that I'm so excited to read and like it just, oh, that is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson and the main reason I got this is the cover, if I'm being completely honest, because the cover artwork is by Charlie Bowater, I, I've never actually said the name out loud who has done a lot of artwork for the Akatar series and that's why it might look familiar um but like this is like such a beautiful book like look at it and also apart from the cover just looking like amazing <laughs> um it also really sounds good um all sorcerers are evil Elizabeth, Elizabeth has known that as long as she has known anything raised as a foundling in one of or to Smurr's great libraries, Elizabeth has grown up among magical grimoires that battle beneath iron chains, capable of transforming into grotesque monsters if provoked. When an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimoire, Elizabeth is accused of treason and sent to face justice in the capital. With no turn, with no one to turn to but her sworn enemy, the sorcerer Nathaniel Thorne, and his mysterious demonic servant, she finds herself entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy. Not only could the great libraries go up in flames, but the world along with them. I have heard that this possibly is just a standalone, but that people think they could be a book too. I don't really know, but I'm hoping to read this one very soon. Let's face it, be in the new year, but I will, I'll get to it. Next up, we have a book that I really should have read by now, but I haven't. But I'm hoping to get to it by the end of the year. But I'm also scared to read it. Like, if I don't read it, then nothing bad happens, right? You know, these characters stay with me and they stay alive. And, that, and I don't have to say goodbye. And that is Dark Dawn by J. Kristoff. My precious. <sighs> You guys know I loved Nevernight in God's Grave. I actually reread Nevernight in my last wrap up. You want to see me talk about that? I'm still in the process of rereading God's Grave. Again, I've got distracted by other books that I'm reading, books that I've read for review and stuff like that. But I've also just been, I think, procrastinating and putting off reading Dark Dawn because I don't want it to end because it's not a spoiler alert. Mia dies in the end. It's not a spoiler because Jay spoils the book in the very first page of the very first book and like shit goes down and I don't want to say goodbye to these characters and this world because it's so good. <sighs> I will get there eventually, but yeah, I'm excited. If you've not read any of these books, I really recommend it. My one word of advice is do not get attached to any of these characters. Learn from my mistakes. I said that in my last video. Finally, the last book was sent to me from HarperCollins and that is Riverstone Ridge by Mandy Magro, which um, 
her books look amazing. I've never heard of her before, but I looked into her books and I was like, why haven't I heard of her before? Because I, why haven't I, blah. And I was like, how have I not heard of her before? Because all her books are right up my alley. Um, I did think I might have picked up this book by now, but like, as I said, other books have like popped up that I've read. This is a contemporary romance. Um, it's an adult novel, by the way. A voice from the past becomes the key to her future. After making a mistake that felt like the end of the world to her teenage self, Nina Jones fled the small town of Huntingvale. Now 16 years later, her beloved adoptive mother, Bee, has passed away, forcing Nina to return and decide whether to sell her family home at Riverstone Ridge. But even though Bee can't be there to help her through it all, she left Nina five letters, one sent each week, to finally share the secrets she'd been unable to reveal in life. For Logan Steele, Nina's return is the catalyst he's needed to finally move beyond his tragic past and start living again. When mysterious and increasingly worrisome accidents start happening around the homestead, both Logan's cop instincts and his protective feelings towards Nina spur him to investigate. Will he be able to piece together the puzzle of the past in time? And with dark family secrets emerging from B's past, last words, no. And with dark family secrets emerging from B's last words rippling into the present day, how will Nina find the courage to be truthful to the one man who has always held her heart? Aw, doesn't it sound just really like interesting and just nice and fun? Well, no, maybe not fun, but just, it's right up my alley. So they are all of the books that I got over spring. I feel like summer will be a bit more chilled. Mm. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've read any of these books. Which book do you think I should read next? Yes, I know I probably should read Dark Dawn sooner rather than later, but for some reason I also haven't been spoiled as to what happens in the book which is crazy but also good which just because it just means that never night fans all over the world have been really good at like not spoiling things so props to you guys if you've read the book and i haven't been spoiled well done um so yeah let me know which books i should read next your thoughts on any of these and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed i'll see you guys soon with another video bye